Hi, today we're going to talk about duration-based rules. To get to your duration-based rules, you're first going to go into the administration section and click on the operation settings. And from here, of course, you'll see all your experience types. And under each experience types is where you would edit your rules. And we're going to pick this one right here and we're going to click on add edit operation settings. This will bring up any of the rules that we already have here. And because this particular rule has a duration-based rule already in it, the only other option I can do is create a duration-based rule. So we're going to click on that to create a new one. I could, of course, have edited the other one. The first thing you need to do is the time management. The time management is when a rule is applicable, when it starts and when it ends. So in this case, we're going to create one that starts at 10 a.m. and I can just type in 10. I can add 8 a.m. to differentiate that. And I can type in 2 p.m. for the end time. You'll notice it picks the 24-hour uh, rule here, so it's 1400. I can add in cleaning time, and cleaning time in this case is going to add in uh, a block of time that won't allow that particular station to be booked, whatever stations end up getting booked there'll be an additional 30 minutes. That can, of course, be uh, canceled or ended within your session, within the Your Arcade section for sessions. First date is when the, the rule starts being active, and I'm just gonna choose a time before this uh, today. So we're gonna have it start on 3121, and we're gonna choose the end of the month as to when this particular rule ends. So I can have rules that go different dates, they go forever, or they are just a specific day or week. I can also choose what days of the week I want this particular rule to be active. And if I click on days, that will actually reverse whatever is checked. So if I just want it Saturday and Sunday, or if I want Monday through uh, Friday, I can also, if I were to uncheck these and then check on days, that will of course choose all the days. But for me, I want to choose Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday to make it a weekday rule. The next step is adding billing. And this is where we're going to add the durations and the costs of our uh, sessions. So the first thing we want to do is enter our uh, title and the uh, it's not weekdays, <laughs> weekday rules. And from here, we can add in the duration. Now, keep in mind, first of all, that the title is an internal thing only, only in this section. It's not anything that... Uh, that shows up anywhere else. This is just makes it easier for you to identify which rules are for what. So make sure that the title is descriptive for this particular rule. Now to add a duration, I can just click on the add experience duration and billing, and that will add a line item. And if I want to remove that line item, I can press the X button. So we're going to add in actually three different durations. And on the left hand side, I get to choose the experience type. But the system, because we're in the uh, VR session experience type already, it will automatically choose that. But I could conceivably have a variety of different uh, experience types within this rule. We don't recommend it doing it quite that way. We recommend keeping everything on, uh, the same. But under each of these, now I'm going to enter in a duration and a cost. And so I can have any combination of durations and costs within a specific rule. And we'll do that. And again, I can remove them or add more if I want to. Sales tax, if your uh, country or state requires state tax to be collected, this is where you would enter that in. And we're going to add 7% tax. And then if I want to add in any discounts, I can just click on this button again here and add them or click on the X to remove them. I can have any combination of discounts because keep in mind that discounts themselves have their own rules. And so that means that I can, these, these particular rules may not even apply. So for example, the winter discount may only be applicable during the winter. And now that we're in the spring, this rule won't apply. So keep that in mind that even if you add a discount, it does not mean that a discount will apply to this particular rule. We're going to X those out because I don't want any discounts for this. The next thing to add is games. So first here, max games per session is not a limit of total number of games. It's the number of different games that a customer can play. For example, if I choose four, 
what will happen is a customer will be able to, to choose from all your entire category uh, catalog, depending on which games you assign, which categories you assign. They'll be able to choose the, from the entire catalog for the first three games that they choose, or actually it'll be the first four games. But once they choose the fourth game, only those, those four games that they selected will apply to that remainder of that session. So if they played, for example, Arizona Sunshine, Job Simulator, Super Hot, and Elven Assassin, now those are the only four that'll appear, that will appear for them to be able to change between. But for the first four choices, before they choose the fourth one, they'll be able to choose from your catalog based on how you select them. And speaking of catalogs, that's where this next button is, the Assign Game Categories. So right now, without any game categories assigned, they are able to look at your entire catalog of what is installed on your system, what Synthesis VR has detected as being installed uh, on your, your drives, and it will offer those to the customer. Once I've assigned a single category by clicking on here, then this category is the only games, or the games in this category, are the only games the customer will see. They won't see any categories because I've only assigned one game category, so it's redundant to offer them to choose a category. So now they'll see everything in Shooter. Once I assign more than one category, so once I get two or more, the customer will see categories first and will be able to go into those and choose the games in that category. The other thing to note is that if I were to choose them in a different order, so if I put rhythm first and then shooter, that's how they will appear for the customer in the menu. And to, just to note that, uh, or this is useful rather, if you are going to, for example, put your new games at the top, or if you want to put uh, highlight certain games at the top to entice them to choose those particular games, this would be the way to do that. And this allows you to do that. In advanced, couple things there again. So allow overlap with other rules means that if I have it set to yes, which is the recommended setting, uh, this rule within the same experience type will work together with other rules. Meaning that if I had a 10 to two rule like this, and then I had a two to four rule and a four to six rule or whatever, those would all generally work together and just will, uh, will cooperate. Uh, once I choose no, then this particular rule within an experience type will essentially override other rules. And that will be useful for days, for example, you have different hours, uh, one particular day, a holiday day, or if you're closed on a holiday, you'd want to set this to no so that, uh, and then set your time management uh, to something small. Uh, and that will end up allowing you to, um, to block out days. And we'll talk about that in a second in more detail. So we'll leave this at yes so it can work together. Voice announcements are if you want to have an announcement uh, announced, a, a time announcement uh, happen at specific times. So for example, if I set up an announcement at 5, 15, and 30, what will happen is at the 30 minute mark, if they have that time, much time remaining, the system will announce that they have 30 minutes left or whatever you assign in the branding section. 15, same thing, five, the same thing. The last time I choose can be a different announcement than the other ones. And again, that's set up in the branding. And of course you can have no announcements if you just X those out or multiple announcements depending on how you want to do that. So we'll just do another ones here and have them really granular. Optional items for sale. If you set up your um, your goods, you can add um, you can add stuff here. So this is just generic item that I've added, and that is just generic. I don't normally use that, so I would not have that in there. Uh, so we're going to save that, and you'll see that uh, once this closes, that this now rule shows up here. Now let's talk briefly about that closing time. So let's say I want to create a rule where I am not open. So I'm going to actually pick from 0 to 0 1 and I am going to have no, t no cleaning time and the date is going to be let's just say we're closed on the 22nd and it doesn't matter what days of the week, but that happens to be, I believe it was a Monday. So I'm gonna choose it on Monday. Billing won't matter, but I do need a title. And I may need a duration, so we're gonna just do that. But it, it does not matter what the durations are. Games doesn't matter. And we wanna go into advanced. So just to recap, we've got time management, which is just a minute. Billing is that we're closed, and we do have a, a arbitrary duration 
And if we go to advance, we're going to say no on that. If I click on save, then on this uh, on Monday, 322, this rule is going to be closed. We're going to be closed on that day because this is now overriding any other rules in that day. And so although it says 24 hours, it generally just means that during that 24 hour period, they are not, we are not taking any bookings. Once we're in here, the other things we can do, of course, is we can edit that duration rule and continue to edit that from there. We can copy it. So if I want to copy the weekday rules and all I want to do is let's call this weekday afternoon. And from here, I can just adjust the things I want to do. So now I want to make this, uh, I want to make this from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And now this rule is pretty much the same, but I can change pricing if I wanted to. So if I want to make it more expensive, I can do that and save that. And now if I look, I have a weekday afternoon rule that applies from 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. And it's a little pricier than my weekday morning rules, which of course I might end up renaming this to do that. And of course, now I can delete a rule by clicking delete. And it gives me a, a, a precautionary thing there. And then I can delete that. And now that rule is gone and I'm no longer closed on that day. And that is duration-based rules.